KG and Ringy Quick Hitter. Brass Matrix. Ever dig something up and think to yourself, I'll have to research that one of these days and then put it away and forget about it until the next time one pops out of the ground? Well, it's been about 10 years since I found my first one of these weird looking things, and this time I just couldn't let it go. I figured they were part of an old typewriter or something, but what I found out was way more interesting. Turns out these are related to a whole pile of printer plate finds I've accumulated over the past 12 years as well. Not the newer style like these with the photo images and the like, but rather the small rectangular ones that possess only a single line of print on the edge of the plate instead of the face. Anyone that's detected as long as we have has probably run across one or the other, so if you haven't figured it out on your own already, I'll tell you what they are, why they're so prevalent, and also a really cool little historical tidbit discovered during the making of this quick hitter. My first guess of a typewriter part wasn't that far off, because these little brass objects, or matrices, are actually from a printing process, something called a linotype machine, invented by German-American Ottmar Mergenthaler in the late 1800s to set type for print. Printing. It was a massive, complicated, mechanical beast, but was used everywhere, and incredibly, was used all the way up into the 1970s and even the early 80s when robots and computers invaded and took over the planet. This huge machine had a giant tray full of these little matrices at the top, and when the operator typed a letter on the keyboard, the matrix for that letter dropped down and slid into place behind a tiny window. Once the line was completed, a lever was pulled and the stack of matrix molds was pushed into to a chamber where molten metal was injected, producing a single line of text on a lead linotype slug. These slugs were then stacked into wooden trays and used to print newspapers and business cards and whatever, and the individual letter molds or matrices were returned by a mechanical arm back to the tray at the top of the machine. The unique little grooves on each matrix determined the proper slot for it to slide into. Rube Goldberg in the house, right? There are some really cool YouTube videos out there that show actual restored and fully functioning linotype machines making these little slugs. I'll put some links to them in the description in case you want to go full nerd on this subject matter later. Hard to believe versions of basically the same machine were still being used up into the 1970s and 1980s, but they were. Once I got that far, I decided to dig out all the slugs I found over the years and see what they actually said. So I lined them all up and grabbed an old ink pad and printed myself a copy to see if they would still produce something legible. The first one had in auto mishap on it, so obviously this newspaper report was about a car crash. From that bit of the article's title, we can assume someone got run down or injured. Or maybe it was a dog or a squirrel or even a chicken. Whatever it was, it doesn't sound like good news. The next line starts with Miss Mary something or other, too worn out to read the rest of it. Probably a name for a business card or something. The next says sponsored by the Cantrells, I think. No idea on that one. The next one is something like Garters, Mira, and then Line Broken, which was probably a mistake finished off with the intentional Line Broken, and I'll explain why I think that in a minute. Moving on, the next line reads Powell Phillipsburg Company, which is really cool because the town of Phillipsburg and Powell County are right near where KG and I used to live in Anaconda, Montana, just one county over from Deer Lodge. Next to last was just a slug with four letters. It might be the word harm, I think, but it's hard to tell. And as promised, here's that surprise historical tidbit I discovered after decoding the last line, which reads NV E-T-A-O-E-T-A-O-I-N. At first I thought it was just nonsense or some kind of Latin phrase, but I found a newspaper article from sometime in 1978 that explained the reason for this particular slug. It was during the final days of linotype operation as the transition to newer technology came into play, and the author was saying that we would no longer see random newspaper lines like the one pictured here from 1903, containing the phrase, Italian Shrewdlu, after the change over. I was like, what? Note that my slug contains that exact word as well. And if you look at the keyboard layout for a linotype machine, you'll see that E-T-A-O-I-N is a direct line of letters. I know, right? Pretty cool. So the reason for this is that some dude would make a mistake type on a line, and the fastest way to get the machine to reset and get all the matrices back up to the top was to fill out the line with a swipe down the keyboard, creating the nonsense words, a tile win shrewdlu, 
The slugs with those words were supposed to be taken out of the typesetting racks by the editors, but inevitably, after a hard night out on the town emptying kegs of Arsteiner and a drained supply of coffee the next morning, one of these bad slugs would slip by and go into print. Obviously, it happened often enough that people noticed it, and enough that that article was written. So there's your little nugget of history for the day, which will use up a few more of your precious brain cells that could have otherwise been used to create a pollution-free energy source for mankind's future. But what of? See you at Taiwan Shrewdloo. Ring you out. Quick hitter.